If you consider yourself to be normal and totally healthy, it doesn't mean that a psychiatrist would have the same opinion of you. At the same time, there's no guarantee that a doctor wouldn't make a mistake when diagnosing you either. It's possible that society simply agreed to consider that most people are normal and that insane people are clinic patients. The same strange ideas occurred to American psychologist David Rosenhan in 1973. In this new episode of Simple Infographics, we'll find out what kind of experiment the psychologist conducted and what it led to. David Rosenhan was no rookie intern. By that point, he had already completed his doctorate in psychology at Columbia University. University. He also taught at other prestigious universities, including Princeton and Stanford. He wanted to understand how the diagnostic system in psychiatric clinics worked, and he decided to do so through a very bold experiment. His subjects were seven people with normal, healthy psyches. Some of his psychology colleagues, an artist, a pediatrician, and a housewife. Rosenhan himself became the eighth participant. They had a rather strange goal, to get admitted to a psychiatric hospital as patients. We'll call them Rosenhan agents. They went to 12 psychiatric clinics throughout America in different states, from rundown hospitals in rural areas to university research facilities and even an elite private hospital. They used factual information about themselves. The only made up things in their biographies were their names and places of work. So, the agents arrived at the clinics and complained of the same imaginary symptom. Frequent auditory hallucinations. They described it as hearing voices inside their head. Sometimes these voices would whisper the words empty, hollow, and knock to them. This could indicate an existential crisis. That is when one experiences high levels of anxiety when thinking about themselves and their future. The fake patients had no other symptoms. The psychiatrists in the clinic talked with Rosenhan's agents, and rather than saying, you're fine sir, go home, you can't fool us, each of the eight subjects were independently diagnosed with schizophrenia by their doctors. Schizophrenia is a severe mental illness wherein a person loses touch with reality. Its most common symptoms are hallucinations, delusions of persecution, and apathy. The participant in the paid clinic, however, received a much milder diagnosis, bipolar disorder. This condition is marked by rapid mood swings. Joy and mania are replaced by a sharp drop in energy levels, and vice versa. None of the agents were professional actors, but they managed to keep up the lie successfully. In the second part of the experiment, Rosenhan's agents were tasked with trying to get out of the clinic as quickly as possible. Once in the hospital, they stopped complaining about hearing voices and generally behaved like normal people. They told the staff that they weren't sick and asked to be released, but the clinic staff didn't listen to them. They continued to treat the experiment participants as patients, giving them doses of strong sedatives. The agents, of course, didn't take the pills and flush them down the toilet. They did this because otherwise it could violate the objectivity of the experiment. However, the real sick patients also threw out their pills, but the hospital staff didn't pay any attention to this. The attending physicians didn't care how the patients inside the hospital behaved, just as long as they didn't break the rules. All the agents kept diaries, in order to keep track of the experiment's progress. At first, they did it in secret, but nobody was looking at their writings. Only in one clinic did a nurse take a diary, flip through it, and make a note in the patient's personal file. He was then given another diagnosis, graphomania. This is when a person writes an inordinate amount of unintelligible text and is unable to stop. Rosenhan found out many other unsavory things about mental hospitals in his experiment. The staff treated the patients like they were things, not people. They discussed patients' cases openly, right in front of them, even laughing at them. The experiment participants also calculated how much time the staff spent with patients. Nurses spent almost their entire shifts posted up at the nurse's station in a glass-walled room. They only spent about 11% of their time away from the station. Patient contact with doctors only amounted to 7 minutes a day, even though many patients needed more communication with normal people in order to properly recover. In the clinic, the sick saw only cruelty and indifference. Patients Patients' personal belongings were examined repeatedly. Staff berated patients with obscene language, prescribed painful procedures, or even beat them. One of the agents witnessed an orderly hit a patient after the patient told him, I don't like you. The so-called violent ones were simply tied to the bed and left to lay there for hours. The worst thing Rosenhan agents endured was the lack of personal space, as there was nowhere really to be alone in the clinic. The clinic setting and atmosphere were reminiscent of a prison. The experiment participants felt miserable constantly. Rosenhan's agents were released only after they admitted the existence of their illness, and after they had undergone gone a full course of treatment. Each of the agents had spent anywhere from one week to almost two months in their respective facilities, three weeks on average. Interestingly enough though, the real patients were more attentive than the doctors. One of the patients shouted that his ward neighbor was an undercover journalist or an auditor. Turns out his neighbor was Rosenhan. Nonetheless, the clinic staff persistently ignored the patient's claims. All in all, 35 patients tried to let the staff know that there were imposters among them, but nobody listened. Later, David Rosenhan analyzed the participants' medical histories. Their doctors had counted any peculiar behavior as a manifestation of their mental illness. For example, one of the patients said that he had a warmer relationship with his mother than with his father during childhood, and the doctor adjusted even this to fit his medical history. Also, each of Rosenhan's agents were diagnosed with schizophrenia in remission, that is, the reduction of schizophrenia symptoms. Just imagine an absolutely healthy psychiatrist being stamped as schizophrenic. In January of 1973, Rosenhan published the results of his investigation in the journal Science, and his article was eloquently titled, On Being Sane in Insane Places. 
In the article, David Rosenhan wrote that it was not merely depressing, but frightening, how many people, one wonders, are sane, but not recognized as such in our psychiatric institutions. How many have been needlessly stripped of their privileges of citizenship, from the right to vote and drive to that of handling their own accounts? The label sticks, a mark of inadequacy forever. The article literally blew up the scientific community, sparking a real scandal. It didn't just damage the reputation of the doctors and clinics involved, Rosenhan questioned the entire system intended to detect mental illness. After the article was published, a wave of protests against psychiatry rose up throughout the world. People took to the streets with signs, and the most fervent protesters even proposed to close all the clinics and release the patients. But Rosenhan didn't stop there. He continued his experiment. In response to the accusations of unprofessionalism, Rosenhan met with the doctors from a large clinic that claimed a situation would never happen in their hospital again. Rosenhan suggested that over the next three months, he would send several of his agents there and that the doctors would be able to easily recognize them. And so they did. Out of 193 patients admitted to the facility, they identified 41 of them as agents. But you know, what? Rosenhan had deceived everyone yet again. He hadn't sent a single agent to the clinic. All 193 newcomers had mental illnesses. The first experiment showed that the doctors couldn't distinguish a healthy person from an insane one, and the second showed that the doctors didn't know how to identify insanity. Rosenhan was again harshly criticized in scientific circles. A majority of his colleagues said any doctor could diagnose a patient incorrectly if the patient was lying. Robert Spitzer, a well-known author in the field of psychiatric disorder classification, wrote about this very figuratively. If I were to drink a quart of blood and concealing what I had done, come to the emergency room of any hospital vomiting blood, the behavior of the staff would be quite predictable. If they labeled and treated me as having a bleeding peptic ulcer, I doubt that I could argue convincingly that medical science does not know how to diagnose that condition. Other doctors have stated that Rosenhan's experiment might reveal errors on the ground in the facilities, but it doesn't necessarily mean that all psychiatry is flawed. The agents were also quite nervous during their psychiatric consultation, afraid to reveal themselves, and it appeared suspicious. Dr. Blair of the University of California wrote that a singular statement about one's own health is not enough to get them out of a clinic. Many patients in the hospital behave appropriately because it makes things easier on them. And finally, psychiatrists are humans, which means that they can be wrong sometimes. Any diagnosis like mental illness is only a product of its era. For example, the condition of hysteria no longer exists. While it was a very common diagnosis for a while, it disappeared in the 1950s. The scandal surrounding Rosenhan's experiment did, however, lead to a positive outcome. In 1977, the so-called Declaration of Hawaii was adopted. The declaration was comprised of ethical standards for psychiatrists. Because of this, the situation changed to the better for clinic patients. So what problems were found with Rosenhan's experiment? First of all, the reliability of the diagnosis strongly depends on the experience and skill of the psychiatrist themselves. All other methods from psychological testing to computer tomography of the brain only help to determine the degree of the patient's health. But what would happen if they gave you an incorrect diagnosis? First things first, your nerves would be put to the test in a psychiatric facility. You'd be around people who aren't quite right in the head. They can behave strangely and sometimes pose a danger to you. Second, any normal person contained within four walls for long enough will become emotionally unstable. They'll fall into a depression or conversely start to get cabin fever. And clinic staff would simply chalk it up as a manifestation of their illness. These anxiety-like symptoms are then relieved by strong sedatives which make the patient sluggish and compliant. But eventually they could become reliant on these drugs and would need to take them for a long time even after returning to life as usual. Otherwise, the symptoms of their illness would immediately return. Third, you'd be labeled as crazy after leaving the clinic, a label that's hard to escape. It might be hard for you to find normal work, which could cause your life to spiral out of control. And that in turn leads to depression or aggressive behavior. And then you'll be sent back to the clinic. So are patients being treated or mistreated in mental hospitals? It's possible that those deemed inconvenient for society are simply locked up in these facilities. And of course, they're eventually released. But do they end up being even crazier than they were before treatment? Such thoughts have haunted psychiatrists even before Rosenhan's experiment. In 1961, the National Institute of Mental Health urged sociologist Irving Goffman not to publish his book Asylums, wherein he wrote that anyone locked up in a mental hospital, even a healthy person, would lose their mind. In the 21st century, American psychotherapist and writer Lauren Slater repeated repeated Rosenhan's experiment. She also went to a clinic and complained about auditory hallucinations. They diagnosed her with depression with psychotic tendencies and prescribed her antidepressants along with some controversial antipsychotic drugs. Only, they didn't admit her to the clinic. Their diagnosis was again mistaken. She described her experience in the book Opening Skinner's Box, published in 2004, and the British television channel BBC conducted a similar experiment in 2008 on the program Horizon. In the experiment, three prominent psychiatrists observed ten volunteers. Five of them actually had psychiatric issues. 
symptoms. The experiment concluded with only two of the ten patients being accurately diagnosed. So what do we do? Deem everyone in the world to be healthy and close all the psych facilities? But some people really do need psychological help. Some can't wrestle their demons alone and others need constant care, including medication. Otherwise, they could harm themselves or others. The main thing we can do is to avoid being indifferent and to treat others with more kindness. If someone was previously ill and needed psychiatric help, that's no reason to avoid them or to keep them from pursuing a career. So what do you think? Is it possible to assess the professionalism of psychiatric specialists with experiments like Rosenhan's? How well do these experiments reflect the reality of the situation? Share your point of view in the comments, like this video, and subscribe to the Simple Infographics channel. See you soon on our next episode.